There are different kinds of music. There are different kinds of poetry, too. Poetry began as music. It developed and grew out of early folk ballads. Robin Hood put on his harness, good on his head a cap of steel, broad sword and buckler by his side, and they became him will. And coming on folk ballads are still sung. Their words are poetry. Home, home on the range. Where the deer and the antelope play. Where seldom is heard a discouraging word. And the skies are not cloudy all day. When most people think of poetry, they think of the stanza form. Each division of the poem has a regular pattern of number of lines, rhythm, and rhyme. The stanza form was used by Alfred Lord Tennyson in this narrative poem that tells the story of the disastrous defeat of the British Light Brigade at Balaclava during the Crimean War of 1854. Theirs not to make reply. Theirs not to reason why. Theirs what to do and die. Into the Valley of Death rode the 600. A characteristic of the narrative poem is that it tells a story through action. Cannon to the right of them, Cannon to the left of them. Cannon in front of them, volleyed and thundered. The language is simple and direct. When can their glory fail? Oh, the wild charge they made. All the world wondered. Honor the charge they made. Honor the light brigade. Noble 600. Narrative poetry, like Tennyson's charge of the light brigade, is usually concerned more with action and story rather than with character and characterization. Extremely long narrative poems that stress the adventurous deeds of legendary heroes are called epic poems. Beowulf is an epic poem about a mythical Anglo-Saxon warrior who fought and slew the dreaded Grendel, a grotesque monster. From the stretching moors, from the misty hollows, Grendel came creeping, accursed of God. A murderous ravenger minded to snare foils of heroes in high-built hall. In contrast to storytelling narrative poetry is lyric poetry, describing common human experiences with a song-like use of words. Edgar Allan Poe wrote the lyric love poem, Annabel Lee, in memory of his dead wife, Virginia Clem. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived, whom you may know, by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. Characteristic of lyric poetry is the use of words and phrases to create vivid images. No other thought than to love and be loved by me. A wind blew out of a cloud, chilling my Annabelle Lee. One means of varying the tone and mood of lyric poetry is with symbols, words that are used to represent other things. Robert Frost in The Road Not Taken uses the simplest of words to produce a symbolic effect. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I? I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. The choice of the road is a symbol for any choice in life. Choices that lead to different destinations. Lyric poetry deals intimately with common human experiences. Life and nature. 
love, and death. Lyric poetry, like all good poetry, enables the reader to look at well-known things in a new way. Audiences are often important for dramatic poetry, which is commonly written for the stage. Hamlet's soliloquy is dramatic poetry, in which Hamlet contemplates suicide. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. Robert Browning's My Last Duchess is a dramatic poem not written for the stage. It is a dramatic character study, elegantly developed through monologue. The jealous Duke of Ferrara shows a visitor the portrait of his late wife, whom he may have had murdered. That's my last duchess painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive. I call that piece a wonder now. Frau Pandolf's hands worked busily a day, and there she stands. Browning continues the poem, characterizing the duchess in detail. She had a heart, how shall I say, too soon made glad, too easily impressed. She liked whate'er she looked on, and her looks went everywhere. Almost all poetry falls into one of three categories. In dramatic poetry, characters speak, revealing their inner personalities. Usually elements of suspense or conflict are interwoven. In lyric poetry, personal thoughts and deep feelings are expressed in a song-like structure. And in narrative poetry, character is revealed by events and actions. But poetry doesn't have to be serious. Lewis Carroll, author of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, wrote pure nonsense in his poem Jabberwocky. Poems of this type are often called light verse. "'Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the momraths outgrabe." Jabberwocky is light verse in stanza form. A highly stylized type of light verse without stanzas is the limerick. There was an old man of Peru who dreamt he was eating his shoe. He awoke in the night in a terrible fright and found it was perfectly true. The limerick has a catchy, forceful rhythm. The first two lines and the last line rhyme with each other. And the third and fourth shorter lines rhyme. Another specialized form of poetry is haiku. Haiku creates a picture image using few words to suggest more than it actually says. Many winds that blow, ask them, which leaf of the tree will be next to go? Is the poem really about leaves? Many winds that blow, ask them, which leaf of the tree will be next to go? Haiku poetry is restricted to just 17 syllables, usually arranged in a five, seven, five syllable pattern. Haiku poetry, by custom about nature, also deals with common human experiences on a high level of sensitivity. Another kind of poetry, as highly structured as haiku, but much longer, is the sonnet. There are many different kinds. Traditionally, this is formal lyric poetry, which usually has 14 lines in a fixed pattern of rhyme and rhythm. This sonnet was written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning to her poet husband, Robert Browning. Although her sonnet comes from the slower-moving world of the middle 1800s, the deep feeling of love it conveys spans time and beat the lover today. How do I love thee? 
Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. Although in this type of sonnet there is usually a shift of mood or thought after the first eight lines, here the poet has varied the strict pattern to reinforce the range and intensity of her love. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And, if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Although the length and meter of sonnets are rigidly confined by tradition, the rhyme scheme has several variations. Here is one of them. But poetry doesn't need meter or rhyme to be poetry. Many poets, such as E. E. Cummings, have abandoned them for free verse and have relied on their own typography and punctuation to create a rhythmic pattern. Here is a section of Cummings' poem, In Just. It's spring, and the goat-footed balloon man whistles far and we. The form and structure of poetry can vary. From E.E. E. Cummings' free verse to haiku, to sonnet, limerick, or the stanza, block form. But regardless of poetry's structure, its language and its imagery reflect a vast spectrum of life. For your amusement, for your excitement, and for your appreciation. <laughs> 